I'm Denise. Thank you for watching my video. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the consonant sounds in English. Before I begin, I do want to let you know that I have an American accent, so my accent will be different from people in other countries. And also, my accent is from the state of Michigan in the United States. So the way I pronounce some sounds may be a little bit different from the way people in other parts of the United States pronounce the same sounds. However, my accent is a typical American accent, um, but I just want you to know that there are differences. So please keep that in mind. There are 24 consonant sounds in English, and those sounds are P, as in pay and pet. Notice that I have underlined the letter or letters that make a particular sound. So in this case, the sound P is made in these two words with the letters P. Sometimes the letters are the same as the sound, or they look similar. Sometimes they are different, as in this one. Okay, but I'll get to this. So these, but I have underlined the letters that make each of the 24 sounds. Okay? Again, the sounds are P, as in pay, and pet. B, as in big, and boat, t as in ten and top, d as in day and desk, k as in cat and key, g as in get and go, as in face and food, v as in van and very, as in thin and think, v as in that and then, as in see and sit, z as in zebra and zoo, sh as in she and shoe, j as in measure and usual, as in chair and child, j as in job and juice, m as in me and my, n as in no and not, Mm, as in ring and sing, l as in let and like, r as in red and rose, w as in we and wet, y as in yes and you, as in hat and head. I'd like you to look at this one again. This is y. The International Phonetic Alphabet uses this symbol, which looks like the letter J in English. This is y, but I will be using this symbol. In American transcription, linguists often use y, and I will be using it because it is the same or similar to the letter y 
which produces the y sound in English. So again, the International Phonetic Alphabet uses this symbol, y, and I will be using this symbol, y. Please notice that each of these phonetic symbols represents one sound. Many of these symbols look just like the letters that make that sound. For example, here, the sound m looks like the letter m. But the difference is, when I write the symbol for the sound here, I have to use two slashes on either side of the letter. Here, when I am using just the letter, I do not use the slashes. And you'll see that throughout here. So for example, here, I have the sound P. And I know that I'm talking about the sound because of the two slash marks. Here, I have the letter P. And I know it's the letter because I do not have the slashes. This is a slash, a forward slash. So again, when I write the symbol for a sound, I need to include two slashes. So if I write this symbol, it looks like a letter T, but because it's between the two slashes, it represents the sound T. It is not the letter T. The letter T is this, without the slash marks. Also, please notice that many of these symbols do look just like the letters that make that sound. For example, the sound P is made with the letter P, and they look the same. But look here, the sound K can be made by different letters. It can be made with the letter C. It can also be made with the letter K. Here, K for cat and K for key are the same sound but I just have one symbol which represents that sound. And the symbol looks like this. It happens to look like the letter K, but again, I know that it's the symbol representing the sound because I have the two slash marks. So most of these symbols do look like letters, but I know they're sounds because of the slashes. Sometimes, however, the symbol does not look like letters that we are used to. For example, here, this symbol, is for the sound th, which is represented normally with the letters th. However, I have th here, and this th makes a different sound, and are not the same sound. So I have two different sounds. They happen to be written with the same letters. So we use different symbols to represent those sounds. So most of the time, the symbols do look like letters, but we know they're sounds because of the slashes. Some of the time, the symbols do not look like regular letters, so we use different symbols, okay? Also, one symbol makes one sound, regardless of the number of letters that may make that sound. Later on, when I talk about each of the individual sounds in later videos, you will see some of the different spelling combinations that can make a particular sound. For example, let's look at This is usually made with the letter F. However, it can be made with other sounds, with other letters too. It can be made with the letters PH, for example. And in later videos, when I talk about this particular sound, I will show you some of those other spellings. But for now, these words that I have shown you are words that you can use as keywords to remember these sounds. These are the 24 consonant sounds in English. I have listed them here for you, like this. And I listed them with keywords that make that sound. So, the key words are here to help you remember how to make the sound and to, remember, to help you remember what that sound sounds like. 
So here, the sound p is represented by the word pay and the word pet. So if you remember these two sounds, pay and pet, and later you see a word that also has the p sound, you can remember it's the same sound as in these two words. And that would be the same for any of these. Later, if you see a word that has been transcribed, let's say with this symbol, we, you can remember that this symbol is the sound in the word she and the word shoe. So later, if you, again, if you see this symbol, you can just say, oh yeah, it's the same sound as in she. And that can help you to figure out how to pronounce another word later on, okay? So here we have the 24 consonant symbols and some keywords that make the sound of each of those symbols, okay? The way we make the consonant sounds is by blocking the air that is coming from our lungs. We can partially block that air or we can completely block the air. And we do it with different parts of our mouth. So I can block the air coming out of my lungs by closing my lips. Or I can block the air by putting my teeth on my lip or by using my tongue. And there are other ways of blocking the air coming out of my lungs. So these sounds block the air in different ways. The P sound uses the two lips. I first close my lips and stop the air, and then I open my lips and let the air come out. So, P, P. I close my lips, then I open them. With the T sound, I have my lips open, but my tongue is touching the top of my mouth. And then I move my tongue and let the air out. T. T. So I'm using my tongue to block the air momentarily. With the F sound, I use my upper teeth on the inside of my lower lip, like this, and I don't completely block the air, but I block it from coming out of the center of my mouth, and I allow the air to come out of the sides of my mouth. So again, I am somewhat or somehow blocking the air that's coming out of my lungs. And these sounds block the air in different ways. I have grouped the sounds, many of them, in pairs like this. You should be able to see I have grouped P and B together with this red line. I've grouped T and D together with this red line. K and G together and I've grouped and S and Z, Sh and Z, Ch and J. I've grouped those together because they make, they block the air in the same way. So both P and B block the air coming from my lungs by closing the lips. P, B. They use the same method, but they are not the same sound. So the difference in these two sounds is in the voicing of the sounds. Voicing, and I better write that. Voicing means that the vocal cords are vibrating. So I have written for each of these, I've written either VL for voiceless or VD for voiced. If a sound is voiceless, it means the vocal cords do not vibrate. If the sound is voiced, it means the vocal cords do vibrate. So with these two sounds, P and B, although 
They are made by use, using the same, my mouth in the same way. They're both made by closing my lips and then opening my lips. The voicing is different and is different. And that makes the difference in the sound. P is a voiceless sound, so my vocal cords do not vibrate. B is a voiced sound, so my vocal cords do vibrate. If we see F and V, these two sounds are both made by putting my upper teeth on the inside of my lower lip like this. But the difference is in the voicing. F is a voiceless sound. V is a voiced sound. We can hear and feel voicing a little bit better if we look at these two sounds. The voiceless sound is S and the voiced sound is Z. Both of these sounds are made by putting the tongue near the top of my mouth, but allowing the air to escape. This is s, s, and you probably have that sound in your own language. S. If we compare that to z, they are both made with the tongue in the same position, but z is voiced. So, I'd like you to try to feel your vocal cords vibrate. Some people put their fingers here, some here. Sometimes you can feel it under your chin. Feel around your throat area until you can feel your vocal cords vibrating. They should vibrate, they will vibrate with the sound z. So, z, z. Feel it when I have my fingers here. Zzz. However, if I make the sound s, s, there's no vibration. S, my vocal cords do not vibrate. So I'd like you to do this. We're going to move from this sound s, with no vocal cord vibration to this sound z, with vocal cord vibration. And with these two sounds, with z, you can also feel some vibration in your tongue, but that's not what I'm concerned about right now, okay? I'm concerned about the vocal cords. So put your fingers somewhere where you can feel the vibration, and we're going to move back and forth from these two sounds, okay? Because I, I really want you to feel the difference. It's important to feel the difference in, in voicing. So first this one, s, no vibration. Z, vibration. Okay, that is voicing. So the only difference between these two sounds is the voicing. They are both made with the tongue and the mouth in the same position. Let's take a look at, um, they're, they're all similar, okay? Let's go to T and D. T is a voiceless sound. I have VL. VL is voiceless. D is a voiced sound. VD. VD is a voiced, okay? So, it's not going to be as easy to feel the vibration here because these sounds are stopped. We, do, we don't continue them as we do with the s. It's a prolonged s is a prolonged sound, so we can keep our fingers there and feel it. These are not, but let's try it anyway. So this is voiceless. This is voiced. We make this sound by putting the tongue on the ridge behind our upper teeth. So t d. Try to stretch out the sound a little bit so you can feel the vibration on D. This is T, D, T, D. Let's try another sound that we can continue for a while, okay? So we can feel it better. How about these two? To make these two sounds, we put our upper teeth on the inside, very lightly on the inside of our lower lip, like this, okay? 
and then we push the air out of our mouth. So this one is voiceless, it's this one is a voice. Let's try it and put your fingers somewhere where you can feel the vibration in your vocal cords. No vibration. Vibration. Again, my mouth, my lips, my teeth, my tongue, whatever, those are in the same position for both sounds. Okay, so. That part is the same. We're blocking the air in the same way with our teeth and our lower lip, but the vocal cords are behaving differently. If you cannot feel the difference, then you may not be making the sounds correctly, okay? So it is important to feel the difference in the vocal cord vibration for each of the paired sounds that I have made. So that is something that you could practice to be sure that you are making these differently. Sometimes people confuse the sounds if they don't have both sounds in their language. For example, if you don't have both p and b in your language, then you might make those sounds the same way. So to practice the difference, make sure that the voicing is different. Make sure that the second sound is voiced. And the first one isn't. Let's try some others. Let's try these two. Okay? This is shh, as in she. This one is zh, as in zhr, measure. The first one is voiceless, so no vibration. The second one is voiced. Let's try those. Feel the vocal cords vibrating for zh, and you should not feel them for sh. Okay? So, we've learned two things in the last few minutes. <laughs> we've learned one, that the way we make consonant sounds is by somehow blocking the flow of air coming from our lungs. And we can block that air with different parts of our mouth with our lips, our tongue, our teeth, and with our nose. There are different ways of, allow, of blocking the air and of allowing the air to come out. I will go into that in more detail in later videos when I talk about each sound. We have also learned about voicing. Voicing refers to vibration of the vocal cords. Some of these sounds are voiced and some of them are voiceless. When I have pairs of sounds that are made using the same part of the mouth, the difference in those two sounds is in the voicing. Sounds where I have VL are voiceless sounds, so there is no vi vibration in the vocal cords. Sounds where I have VD are voiced sounds, so there is a vibration in the vocal cords. I have not grouped the sounds on this side in pairs because each sound is made with the mouth in a different position. That's different from the pairs of sounds over here. Over here, each sound within a pair is made with the mouth in the same position. Each sound over here is made with the mouth in a different position. These first seven sounds are all voiced sounds. So I have VD for voiced. And the last sound is voiceless, VL, okay? Another concept that I would like you to be aware of is that of consonant clusters. A cluster is a group of something. So a consonant cluster is a group of consonants. Consonant clusters, cluster equals group. So we have, in English, many English words, we have groups of consonants which are not separated by vowels. That may be different from sounds in your language. Uh, it may not be. In some languages, consonants must be separated by vowels. They must have a vowel sound between each consonant sound. And in other languages, that's not a requirement. In English, it is not a requirement to have a vowel sound between each consonant. Let me give you some examples. 
Here we have the word play. So I have the sound p and the sound o together. Play. There's no vowel sound separating those. It's not p lay or pa lay. It's play. We put those consonant sounds together right next to each other. Here's another example. Sport. So the s sound and the p sound are right next to each other. Sport, sp, sport. There's no vowel sound separating them. It's not support. There's no a uh sound or other vowel sound in there. It's just the s and the p together. Squeeze together, sport. Okay? Here's another example. Drink. So we have d and r together. We can have more than two consonant sounds together. Here are three consonant sounds. We have in the word street. We have s. Then we have t. Then we have r. Str. Street. We have many words that have these three sounds together. Straight. Strip. Strike. So there are many str words. But again, this is just an example of a consonant cluster. Consonants that can be together. Okay? There's another one. Scrub. S, k, r, scrub. So don't put any vowel sound between those consonants. Okay? Here are a few examples with the consonant cluster at the end of the word. Here's lived. Although I have written a vowel letter, the letter E, in between the letters V and D, we don't pronounce that E. So the last sounds in this word are V and D. Lived. Lived. So we move right from the V to the D. Here, it's similar, we don't pronounce the E. So the last sounds in this word, filled, are O and D. Filled. Filled. So we move from one consonant sound to the next. And the last example is in the word felt. So I move from the O to the T. Felt. In English, we have consonant clusters. That means we can put several consonant sounds together without putting a vowel sound in between the consonant sounds. Another very important part of English pronunciation is pronouncing the final consonant in a word. Let me give you some examples. In this word, book, the final consonant is k, book. If I don't pronounce this k, then this word would sound something like book. And native speakers would have trouble understanding that. So it's very important to pronounce that final consonant. And that may be different from words in your language. Here's another example. Teeth. It's important to clearly pronounce the final consonant, which in this case is th. Otherwise, this word might sound like t, which is a different word from the word teeth. So a native speaker might think that you are saying this word, tea, which is something that you drink. So it's important to pronounce the final th, teeth to distinguish it from this word, t. Here's another example. Sip has a final p sound. Another misunderstanding that may occur is that in something like this, where we have two very similar words, play and plays, the only difference here is the letter S, which in this case makes a Z sound. This S is a grammatical ending. It's needed because of the subject he. He plays. We don't need this Z sound when we say we play. So we play does not have a final Z. He plays 
does have a final z. If, however, you don't pronounce this final sound and you say he play, it might sound to a native speaker as if you're making a grammatical mistake. Maybe in your mind, though, maybe you see that S in your mind, you know that there's an S on that word, you're just not pronouncing it. Well, maybe in your mind, you're not making a grammatical mistake, but it will sound like you're making a mistake. It will sound like you're not putting an S on there. So, to be grammatically correct, it's necessary to have this final sound here. We play does not have the final Z sound. He plays does have the final Z sound. I will talk about all of this a lot more in another video, but I do want you to be aware of the necessity of pronouncing the final consonant sound in words. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.